Fainting, baby! Let's go! <laughs> Smash like. What's going on? Josh from Colossus Fitness here, and today I'm going to be talking you through creatine, looking at all the studies and research behind it to see whether is creatine worth it. That is the question I get asked almost daily. So first and foremost, the analogy I like is uh, multivitamins. The science on it is very wishy-washy. Uh, some studies prove to their effectiveness. Some say, you know, they might not really do anything at all, and still people take them every single day. Now with creatine, there's actually ample research showing that it is indeed very effective, and if not one of the most effective effective supplements on the market. Mal Patel, head of examine.com, a science-based research um, website to examine supplements effectiveness, is quoted saying, creatine is among the most well-researched and effective supplements. It can help with exercise performance by rapidly producing energy during activity. Creatine may also provide cognitive benefits. And the beauty of creatine is it's shown this consistency through tons of studies. So this isn't just a one-off where it's being deemed effective. This is being consistent and replicated results. Now let's actually jump into what it does. So first and foremost, the main benefit is it helps your body with a storage of ATP and production of ATP. So what this is, is your body, one of your body's kind of energy currencies that will help with that explosiveness from the muscle and help your muscle's ability to synthesize and use that water. That's why you get that water bloating effect because it will dense in the muscle and the creatine helps create the saturation. So people tend to take this primarily to improve that energy and explosiveness, but it also may have those cognitive benefits as we will kind of explore in these future studies. So maybe you want to take a scoop before your next exam. So what is creatine? So creatine is a molecule that is produced by your body um, and it's pretty naturally occurring. You'll find it in some foods such as steaks and other meats. Uh, so you can get it outside of the supplemented form, but the supplemented form is fantastic because it's concentrated and very cheap. So next let's talk the benefits of creatine. So first and foremost, it's gonna improve your athleticism and lean mass. Another cool lesser known fact is that creatine is actually a form of nootropic, which is pretty cool. Another fantastic and really cool benefit of uh, creatine is that it's actually been shown in some studies to prevent sarcopenia. Essentially what this is, as you get older, you'll actually lose muscle as you age. It's natural as your hormones reduce, but this is actually shown to help minimize and work against that. Now you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 let me stop you right there. Creatine's a steroid. You can't be taking creatines. So next up, is creatine a steroid? Absolutely not. As mentioned earlier, this is a naturally occurring substance of the body. And now I know a lot of people will use that argument for other dumb things too, like, you know, some crazy drugs that are found in the wild. So natural isn't always okay, but this is actually something your body does produce. So uh, there's been very minimal uh, kind of adverse effects as seen from creatine, and any research that has stated any negative effects has not been heavily supported. So it's marked as a very safe supplement. It's approved by the FDA. You can get it over the counter, any supplement source. So that's supplement store, so that's something to think of. But there are a few cautions that you might wanna weigh out before you decide to take it. But first and foremost, there's been a few anecdotal reports that creatine has caused restlessness about when taking an hour or less before sleep. So you might not wanna take it right before you go to bed. Next up, uh, there have been a few studies that may indicate that creatine may help encourage baldness. Uh, personally, I've been taking it maybe every day for five years and I've had no problem. I do have very thick hair, but if some baldness is something you're really, really concerned of, you might want to avoid it. However, this research isn't heavily supported and there's only been a few studies saying this, but there's also been a ton of studies not indicating this as well. Another caution is creatine can be very hard on your system, especially if you're undergoing a loading phase, more on that later, but you want to be careful and I definitely recommend starting with three to five grams before having any more as uh, can also be shown to cause stomach cramping and diarrhea. So next up, you walk in your store and you say, give me all the creatines. You, you run in, you want all the creatines. The person who's working there is likely gonna go, bro, we got this new stuff, it's killer. No water retention, come check it out. It's only 10 times the price. Don't buy that. Creatine monohydrate is what you want. It's the cheapest, it's the best. You can get pretty much like a pound of it for like 15 bucks, it's completely wild. But you want that. Even why would you want a creatine that doesn't kind of have water retention? The whole saturation of the muscle is the benefit of creatine. Uh, anything else has not been shown to be any better, if not worse, and is largely just a marketing ploy to make more money. So stick with the basics, just opt in for a normal creatine monohydrate. 
So next question with creatine is do you need to load it? So you'll even see if you actually do buy it on the actual instructions, a lot of them will say you need to load creatine. So loading phase, when you do 10 to 20 grams or so for every day for about a week. Um, so what this does is this does saturate the muscle faster. So creatine, if you take it, you won't get the effects right away. You actually need to give it some time to saturate that muscle with that ATP. So if you load it, you can escalate this process by doing it a lot more rapidly, but the trade off there is it's gonna hurt your stomach, you might risk diarrhea, you might risk some stomach upsetness, and why do you really need to have your muscles saturated? What's really the difference between four days versus seven, you know what I mean? So the only exception to this I know myself is I was powerlifting, I had to cut a ton of weight, I opted off my creatine, which personally I don't think is the best, this was earlier in my career. Um, so what I did right after my weigh-in is I started drinking my shake, I had some coconut water, some creatine, everything like that, and I had like 25 grams, and I had two days basically, it was a 24 hour weigh-in or 48 hour weigh-in, so I was trying to see if I could resaturate everything. I don't think it worked the best, but that would be the only exception I really have. Uh, so I definitely recommend sticking to the typical doses uh, that are recommended, which are three to five grams. Now if you're a hypermuscular individual, like you're super stupid D's, you know, and this would probably go towards enhanced individuals. There has been some research showing that if you're not especially respondent, you can up that dosage all the way up to 10 grams, so you see that effect. The easiest way to know if it's working is if you get that bloat. Uh, so pretty much for me, if I were to hop off it, I'd be about 205. Once I'm saturated, I tend to bloat up maybe three to five pounds. I'm a heavier individual, so it won't be as radical for everyone, and everyone has a different kind of response to it. Some people really feel benefits, some people see that bloat, some people see nothing. Uh, so that's just something to bear in mind experiment with it but those are the correct dosages to take three to five grams if you're not responding up it to ten you don't really need to load quick side note here a lot of people will ask do you need to cycle creatine which would be like two weeks on two weeks off and no you don't have to do that you will lose the effects of creatine by doing this I've been taking it religiously and I know Josh has for at least five years straight every single day three to five grams and it does wonders so now we're gonna do a quick Q&A based on creatine. A question we get commonly asked is, creatine benefit all elite athletes? Now when strength training is involved, it does benefit the individual. However, there's a lot more benefit in novices than there is actual elite athletes. And another question a lot of people will ask us is, what is the best time to actually take creatine for maximum benefits? And the answer I can give you is, whenever you remember and whatever time works best for you. However, there is one interesting study. And in this study, there were 19 lifters that were split into two groups. Both groups did the same workout five days a week for four weeks. One group took five grams of creatine before the workout, and one group took five grams of creatine after. After a month, the men in the after workout creatine group gained twice as much lean body mass as the pre workout creatine group. The after workout group also lost about two pounds more fat than the pre workout group, in addition to being able to bench a couple of pounds more than the pre workout group. The researchers thought that maybe the workout somehow sensitized the cells to creatine uptake, or maybe the post workout meal led to an insulin surge that also facil facilitated creatine uptake. Whatever the reason, it certainly wouldn't hurt to take creatine after training. On non-training days, just take it anytime. And another question is, can you take creatine with hot water? And yes, you can. There doesn't seem to be any reason not to, so if that's why you, what you want to do, go ahead and do it. Now another question, is creatine safe for your kidneys? Now the answer is yes, especially for those with healthy kidneys. But something to keep in mind is that creatine was established and brought into this world in the late 20th century, so we don't have a ton of research from 50 or 100 or 150 years ago. So if you do have kidney issues, you may want to be a little bit safe with this supplement. Now the big question here, should you be taking creatine? I would definitely say yes for majority of people probably watching this, but you've got to take a couple things into consideration. You've got to make sure you have your training down, your nutrition, all those things that are going to bring you to the next level, but if you want a supplement that's proven, that's tested, that's going to yield amazing results in conjunction with the training, nutrition, everything like that, give it a try. In the first link in the description, we have a supplement guide with our top supplements that we'd recommend all of you guys trying out and implementing into your routine. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit that like button, and we hope you learned a ton from this video. Peace.